Luminar Neo 1.0.6 is coming out May 12th. Hopefully that's when I'm releasing this video. I've got a pre-release version of it, and there are a couple of new features in here that I wanna show you. These are some of the things that were promised. One of them is the histogram. A lot of people love the histogram, and it is available now. They had it in before, and they took it out, and now it's a little bit better now and a little larger, so it's easier to see. The other one is Mask AI, and I wanna demonstrate that for you just a little bit. And we've also got some performance updates in here, but why don't I go ahead and just show you what it looks like. Hi, my name is William Beam. I'm a photographer just like you. And this is Luminar Neo 1.0.6. All right, so I've got my catalog here. Let me grab, uh, let's say this photo, since I've got a little bit of a landscape in the sky, I'm gonna go ahead and click on edit. So some of the things that I mentioned that we have coming up here are the histogram. And right off the bat, you can see it over here. If you don't see it, go to view, and show a histogram. So you may get the software and it's disabled if you don't see it. So just go over to view, show a histogram, and it'll be there. You can hit the letter J and that will show you the uh, highlight warnings and the shadow clipping warnings. So if you're clipping, that's what um, you're getting, just kind of cycling through that here. So that's as much excitement as I have over the histogram. I'm not someone who's ever really wanted to use a histogram. A lot of people do enjoy it. They know how to use it properly, and now it's there. The other changes we have are regarding mask AI. Also, there's a radio mask now. I have a pre-release version. This works using these tools. It does not work with layers with a version I have, and I may have some bugs in the pre-release version, so we'll take a look at how it works here. But when the final release comes out, I'm hoping that it will work correctly with layers, and maybe they'll have some of the bugs corrected. But let's take a look. Imagine that I wanted to mask the sky. We already know that we can enhance the sky and use the sky enhancer this way, or we could also come down to sky AI and do something to replace the sky. But sometimes you may want to do something different with the sky that you already have. Let's say that we come down here to landscape and we've got this tab over here now that says masking. If we click on that. You can see we have our brush. This is still not an edge aware brush. All of the edge aware stuff seems to be happening with the automatic masking. We have our linear gradient mask. We have our radial gradient mask. And now we have AI mask. And the terminology is a little back and forth. In the documentation I get, it says mask AI. Here it says AI mask. Doesn't matter, it does the same thing. So we click on that and you see that it goes through this little, I don't know what you call that. There's just a lot of geometric shapes and patterns. Basically it's analyzing the photograph to try and determine what's there and what isn't. So we can see that it's analyzing the sky and it's got a few things. Now you're gonna come up with these little tags. It says sky, architecture, mountains, natural ground, man-made ground. All right, before I go to the sky, this is, this is kind of the cool part. Let's go to man-made ground. And when I click that, it recognizes the road. Now, I don't think that it should recognize this over here. And keep in mind with, Luminar products, we often see the first version not quite as refined as we would like it. If you remember when they first started doing things in Luminar AI with you know some of the sky features, it didn't mask quite as well as we would have liked. But if you get a scenario like this, you might want to come back over to uh, grab a different mask, let's say your brush. So let's go back to AI mask since I undid that. And let's say that we go back, we grab our brush. Usually the keyboard shortcut would do it for me, but let's go over here and click erase. And now I'm just going to erase this area. And whether this is man-made ground or natural ground, I think is debatable given the gravel over there. But you can come over here, if it makes a mistake, you can use your brush to bring something in or out, and I'm gonna ignore this little bit over here. And it kind of selected a decent job, at least it recognized the road. Let's go back over here to our masking. We'll take this brush off, go back to our AI mask. I'm gonna turn off man-made ground and select natural ground and see what it chooses. So this area over here and further in the back, that it considers natural. This area up front, it's considering man-made. 
and who's to say who's right or wrong. But if it selects something or doesn't select something you want, then you can go to your brush or maybe the radial or uh, maybe the gradient if that works out for you. But that's how that works. So let's say if we select mountains and it's done, I think, a, a decent job of selecting the mountains over here. There might be a little bit. It's hard for me to tell since it's red rock that maybe you might have to brush in. And you could also select the sky if you wanted to. So you can select multiple things of these little tags that show up for your photo. But the problem I'm seeing with the sky, you see these little halos over here, and then there's a little bit of area over here. So it's not quite perfect yet. It gets you started. But depending on how aggressive you are with the moves that you make, it may or may not be what you want. So let's uh, turn off the mountains and we'll look at the sky. So you can see there's like, these definitely are mountains back here. They look a little bit bluish. And then there's just not quite a perfect mask over here. And without an edge wear brush, you might have some problems. So let me go over here to the adjustments and let's say that we want to add golden hour to what we selected with the sky. And maybe some dehaze. So you can see that it's affecting the sky a bit. And the nice part is I'm not really seeing a halo over here, but, and, we're, and we haven't selected any foliage, so that may not be the best choice. Let me undo this. And let's say that we wanted to uh, choose something else. Let's say that we want to come over here to, I like glow. So we'll do the same thing. We'll go to AI mask and it checks out. It's already analyzed this photo once. So when it started, it seemed to go much quicker this time. And let me grab the sky. And we'll see what happens if I give this a bit of glow. And I'll crank this way up. And the reason I'm doing that is because I noticed that the mask wasn't quite perfect here. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit. But I'm not seeing a halo, and that's actually a pretty good thing. Now, typically, I would not crank something up all the way like that. But if we go back and take a look at what we have here, let's look at our before and after. You can see that we've made a change to the sky, and I'm not seeing the halo. So the mask was showing me a halo. If I come back over here to this, the sky, we can turn that off. And let's try this with maybe a couple of different pictures. So I want to choose this one, and we'll go over to Edit. And what I want to do here is, let's see that, I want to do something with maybe uh, inverting our subject. So let's take a look at, I want to choose Mystical. Let's go to AI, and it's going to go ahead and do its analysis here. And it's going to pick out a person. Now, if you have someone who's maybe smaller in the image, you may see something that says salient object. And that may be a human or it may be something else. What that really means is that's what it thinks is the important subject or object inside of a photo. And it will list that off. So these keywords that we see on the Mask AI are probably going to change somewhat from photo to photo. You're not always going to have a sky. You're not always going to have a human in there. So what you get is going to be just a little bit different from one image to the next. So it's taking a little bit of time going through this. And just for your reference of what kind of computer I have, this is an iMac M1 with 16 gigs of RAM. So the performance is decent. It's better, much better than my Intel iMacs. But it's still going through a lot of calculation. And I think this one in particular is just really kind of making it push the buttons. All right, so there we go. We've got human, we've got flora, still have architecture, water, natural ground, and man-made ground. So let's say that I'm going to take and mask the human. And usually it, I give it a moment to try and get that person. Okay, so we've got this. Now, if we want to, we can go ahead and hit command I, and we should be able to invert that mask. There we go. I'm sorry. So instead of command I, we have to go back to masking and let's invert the mask this way. And now I'm going to go to my adjustments. And I don't know if you can see this or not, but I'm going to bring this up a little bit. And since I selected the human and I've inverted the mask, if you see the background, it was very 
dark and shadowy there, and I'm kind of opening that up. And I can also change the smoothness of this mystical look. So we can change the amount. And it just really changes what we have there. So you may want to do this sometimes if you've got a portrait subject and maybe the background is really what you want to adjust. Instead of clicking all those other options over there, I would recommend that you select your human subject and then invert it. And then you can go back over here and make your adjustments to the background as you want. So that's one way of doing it. Let me reset that. And let's go choose one more different photo. Okay, I think I'm going to go with this one. And the reason I'm choosing this one is because I would like to brighten her up and then I would like to darken the background. So let's click edit. And since we're kind of doing a, a develop setting, let's take a look at enhance. And then again, we've got our masking. So I'm going to choose AI mask. And again, you can see the first time it opens up a photograph, it's analyzing everything. Now, once you've opened a photograph and it's done the analysis before, it may look like it's gonna start, but usually it only takes like a second or so. All right, so let's select our human. We'll go over to our adjustments. And you can see that we can kind of brighten our human up that way. So that works well enough for me. I'm gonna go back to masking now, and I'm gonna go to mask actions, I'm gonna invert. Go back to our adjustments. So what's happened is we've changed this accent to just the background and not to our subject. Since we're working on the same tool here, the mask, when I inverted it, I can't do one mask on her and then another mask on the background within the tool. That is something where you would do this in layers. And currently this isn't working in layers. Okay, I've chosen another image over here and I want to take a look at how this one does its masking. So we'll go over to AI mask. Okay, so what I wanted to point out is that you can do multiple selections and I kind of alluded to this before, but you can click on man-made ground, which should go over here and select this. We'll try a natural ground as well and see if that finds anything. I don't see any natural ground in this image. And I'll turn that off. We'll try architecture as well to see what that does. And this is what I meant that you may have a bug here and there. So you can see that it's kind of painted over her and also part of him. And when that happens, if this isn't working right, for example, you want to brush in up here and brush out or erase on your subject over here. I Part of this, like I said, is because I'm using a beta version. So I've got a pre-release of this software. Hopefully that some of these things will be corrected by the time it comes out. But the other part is, this will improve over time as they train the software with more and more photographs. It'll give it a chance to learn. Remember, this is the same way that we saw some of our AI tools. It's good to get you started. As far as if you have an image and you need to do some masking, I'd say most of the time it does a really good job spot on. But in this case, here's a specific image where it just kind of has blotchiness and it's the AI is still learning. And that may happen to you. But it's the beginning. This is one of the features we were looking for. I'm still waiting for the background replacement. I'm hoping that's coming out within, um, well, I don't know, because <laughs> I'm not working for Skyland. So I, I don't want to give you any promises for something that I cannot deliver because I have no idea exactly when it's coming out. But that said, I am actually happy to see this. It's off to a good start. I think that it will continue to improve. This particular image is probably the worst that I've seen. Usually it's like a, maybe like a little splotch over here. This one got a lot more of it. So it is going to vary image by image. Well, I hope that lets you know what's new in Luminar Neo 1.0.6. The histogram is there. There are some performance improvements for both Mac and Windows. The AI masking is a new tool. I think that it's going to continue to improve. I like it as a good start now, and it'll continue to improve as they come up with more releases. They're training the AI. And I'm not trying to make excuses for it. I'm just simply showing that this is what we've seen with AI tools inside of Luminar products in the past. And also I have a pre-release version here. So if you're seeing some bugs, I hope that it is trained better when the actual release comes out. That would be on May 12th. Also, there is a bit of a special deal. If you go to williambeam.com slash Luminar Neo, 
you'll find that there's a little bit of a discount for a few days or the time of this release. I will put that information in the description of the video. And if you have not purchased Luminar Neo yet, it's a good time to save. Hey, thank you so much for spending a little bit of time with me here today. If you have any questions about Luminar Neo, please let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, please go ahead, click the like button. That tells the YouTube overlords that someone liked it. They will share it with more people. And I really appreciate your time. I'll see you again in the next video.